All righty. Started? You're good to go. Yes, yeah, thank you. I want to welcome everyone to the Manhattan Community Board 1 Transportation and Street Activity Permit Committee meeting for September of 2022. Um, and I'm, I'm Betty Kay. I'm the chair of the committee, joined by Jess Coleman, the co-chair, as well as by uh, Lucian Reynolds, who is our district manager here in CB1, in the 1st District of Manhattan. The agenda tonight is actually very full, but don't get too overwhelmed because I'm going to do what we have to do, and I'm prepared. Some of the things may have to be skipped over. So everybody be brief, get to the point. Otherwise, we're going to be here all night, and I don't want to be. So this is more operational things where I want some input. There will be no voting. There will be no resolutions tonight. The first item is a street co-naming discussion, uh, looking at historical places and events, as well as for organizations. This has been postponed multiple times. We're running out of redo the time we have a year to redo this whole document. So let's at least get this done. Go on to the next slide. I wanted to go through the, the philosophy underpinning the co-naming. So you'll keep this in mind when looking at the different uh, measurements. One from our past discussions that we've had. People have appeared to want rigorous criteria, more rigorous than the existing, because of our historic street grid and limited number of streets, because of the concentration of government agencies, jurisdictions, and buildings, which bring their own demands for naming in their areas, the significant number of terrorist-related incidents that are high profile and have multiple victims, should they all be honored? That was an issue after 9-11, for instance. Uh, I know we ignored everybody when it was the person that went up and killed people on the Hudson River bikeway. Uh, there's also no exp expiration date or renewal needed. So honorees are forever, as far as we know by the current law. This would limit the option for future honorees over the decades and even potentially centuries, which was the big impetus behind it can't just be an every person kind of happy selection. However, there are voices, there was a voice at least, that the criteria should allow an any man honoree. So I want to start by quickly asking people, do you concede with where do we go with the underpinning of what direction are we going when we set our criteria? Is it going with the more rigorous, making the criteria more rigorous, or is it the every man let anybody be it with low level criteria? Yeah, Eric. <clears throat> yeah. Um, actually, I, I think it should remain the same. I, I, I don't think it should be any man, and I don't think, I think the, the proposed ones uh, requirements that were sent, I think they're a little too proscriptive and, and, and the standard might be too high. Um, I, I know that there's no time limit, but if, if the city does put a, a sign, co-names it, mm -hmm. and let's say after 20 years, the sign falls, you know, just you know, falls off and nobody calls to replace it. Would the city replace it? I actually, I mean, I, I don't know that, but I'm going to guess they wouldn't. So I don't see it really as a big problem, but, but for me, I, I don't want to make the requirements so onerous. And I, I just don't see it as, I think they're already, the standards are, are, are pretty high as they, as they are now. And I don't see a need to change it. Okay. Any differing opinions and comments? In the absence of that, they don't have much to work with, but let's well, go on. No, this, this is data. Yes. I, I mean, to me, I read them, they seem quite similar. I did, I did think that uh, the new ones were slightly better, but they seem quite similar. Yeah, well, keep in mind, if you go to the next slide, I'll explain why some of the changes were made or are proposed because there's nothing, no things been happened. But considerations to the guidelines and requirements that I had in mind, and I beg you to keep in mind too, is one, we want to make them clearer to the applicants, the committee members that are making the selections, and our city council representatives who get our recommendations. The city council has the final say anyway on co naming. Uh, two, that they not be overly burdensome for the applicants to complete the applications. So we want to make them clear, not ambiguous. 
This includes the supporting information that they need to provide, and that has to be clear from whatever the criteria are. The measurable, uh, so that requirements can be judged and compared, make it easier for the committee as well. Clear what supportive information is needed from the applicant and manageable for the CB1 office staff, so they know what information to verify and what needs to be submitted. Because a lot of that is not clear with the existing ones. It's, they're much more nebulous. So we'll go to the next slide and we'll take a look at how much is they really harder? How much is it that they're just asking more directly for what's wanted? These are the existing ones and I know you got to see them at home, but a prospective organizational honoree has to be nonprofit, uh, not for profit, be a maximum of 30 years of community involvement, which we don't know what that is should have demonstrated an extraordinary and consistent voluntary commitment, whatever voluntary commitment is, and dedication to the community. So go to the next one, which are the proposed changes, and you'll see that it's still only three things. It was reorganized for right, I'm, I'm into writing, that a prospective honoree must be a not-for-profit organization. That's to clarify it, because this is true of everybody. The other, it wasn't as clear that they also have demonstrated an extraordinary and continuous commitment of at least 30 years, so that hasn't changed, and has benefited the community and or community members in Manhattan Community District 1. This merely says, clarifies, you know, when they say provide benefits, like to whom? Point is, shouldn't some of the benefits go to the people in our district, I think is the intent, if we're gonna co-name a street in our district. Uh, and again, it's to benefit the community or community members. Why? Because it may be something like the American Heart Association, which used to be here. This isn't true, but I'm an example. A nonprofit that used to be here in our district has since relocated to somewhere outside the district, but still provides benefits enjoyed by people in our district. I want to be able to include them as well as those that focus only on this district. Because we have a number of nonprofits in our district that are bigger than our district, such as streets blog, such as um, boy, almost everybody related to streets is located, transportation alternatives. I think Riders Alliance, a lot of the groups are actually based in our district. Also, it's currently located on a street or block proposed for co-naming or if it's not located in our district, they must have a significant association with the street and block that's proposed for co-naming. Again, I don't see this being more difficult. I just see it as being specific, giving a reasoning for why are you asking for this street that you're asking for. So let's get comments about these because they can be very specific as to what's difficult, what needs improvement, what needs whatever you want to say. And I see no hands. Well, I'm comfortable with the added clarity. So you see it more as clarity than burdens? Yeah, because when I read them, they really seem so similar. So now that you presented it, I understand why it's really just clarity. Yeah, Cody. I, I agree with that. Uh, I think the clarity is, is really helpful. Do you agree there's still latitude there for the selection, but it just provides sure. more guidance versus difficulty? I have, I have a question and, and pardon my ignorance on this, but like like is this is this the same as, as if for instance a historian found that a certain block were, you know, um like radio row or whatever, you know, would, would this be the same sort of is this the same sort of process that someone would go through? Um, if you were to, you know, recognize the, the historical significance of a certain block or street. Yes, there are um, three categories and we're going to be doing historical next. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. This is the organization choice. Got it. And there's an historical yeah. choice and then there's the individual choice, which we're not dealing with tonight. Got it. Got I it. want to get some guidance from tonight before taking on individual to bring to the next meeting. Sure. I agree that this, the clarity is helpful. Okay, great. And Jess? Yeah, I just want to quickly say I, I 
I agree. This is not too onerous. It's clear. Um, and definitely more clear than what we have. So yeah, I'm, I'm supportive of this. Well, I see Lucian, do you have something to say? Cause you're, yeah, you're the um, one who handles these things. Yeah. I, I think you, you brought up something that's a bit intriguing uh, in the very beginning when you're talking about how, um, no street name has an expiration date. Um, and that they can endure for an indefinite amount of time. Um, and so I don't want to derail this conversation, but I do think it, it begs the conversation about streets or codenames in CB1 and whether or not they are you know, past their own prime. Um, I know that post George Floyd, there's a lot of conversations about uh, people who streets are named after that um, certainly history doesn't look kindly on. Um, and it, it may be, you know, just as important to, you know, find new names for streets uh, that are more historically appropriate or uh, more timely based on people who need to be honored. Um, if it was poss more possible or easier to change those names. Um, it seems like the immutability really creates a lot of uh, artificial scarcity uh, when maybe there should be more of a, you know, maybe they should only have 15 years and they have to be renewed or 20 years and they should be renewed. Something like that, but I mean, that's, of course, a different conversation. That's a system outside of the system that exists right now, but it is, I think, food for thought. Yeah, no, thank you for bringing that up. And we've discussed this before. I know Patrick is really big on we should accompany this with a resolution to city council member telling them about, you know, the changes we'd like to see in the law, because that would make people more comfortable, such as they have to have some criteria, have some requests that they have to renew in X period of time, because that would handle some of the issues of this could go on forever. But Eric. Yeah, um, yeah, I just want to say, no, I, 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 I'm okay with this one, because when I said onerous, I was going off of what was on the email that you had sent, where it said it, it would have to be of national or historic importance national or historic importance but that's not here in, in in this in this slide so no it's in the next one ah historical places is does have that that wording okay well this one seems fine i i just think the other slide would be more more onerous with that requirement okay well i'm glad we're getting a consensus anyone good then let's move on to the uh, historical places which you can then see what Eric was referring to. This is the existing, keep in mind, and this was done the most recently. I think it was two, just before COVID sometime. But this was that it has to be recognized by a significant historical society or appropriate group, mentioned in a major film book or international news story, and be identified in a widely available map or near a proposed co-naming location, which if you remember, this was done for five points and they use something from Google Maps and they, there are lots of things in about five points that they could use. So they had film, book, and news stories that they could refer to quite easily. I'll start, go to the next one. You can see this, and that's the existing one. It's perspective, these are the proposed ones you'll see are not really very different at all. A uh, historic event, and it just puts in Manhattan, related to our district to make that clearer. Uh, mentioned in at least, I think the only change here was clarifying that it's somehow related to our district. That's really the only change being proposed. Any comments on this? And Eric, you can take this on if you like, since this has the specific issue. Um. No, no, this, this, this doesn't have the other one about the national or historic significance. So I don't have a problem with this. Okay, well, then it looks like everyone's in agreement that we're okay to move forward with these. Keep in mind, as we move towards a more complete document, you'll get a shot at all of it again. I just want to get it done piece by piece. Uh, next, we'll move on to individuals, which will probably be next month, hopefully. And then we'll deal with the application itself because we don't, that needs some cleaning up. Right now, it's 
it needs some cleaning up. But thanks for your help on that. And we'll move now to the 2020. Uh, did you skip? No, I'm sorry. 2024 district budget. I'm going to let Lucian do his presentation first because he's going to talk to you about what he wants done for the one that's going to be the next one, the one we're dealing with right now. Well, he's dealing with right now creating. Then we're going to go to the fiscal year 2023 to review what was submitted and is currently in effect so we can clean out things and you have a better feel for what already exists and would be continued on unless we do something about it. Thanks, so Betty. I can, like to speak? Yeah, I, I'll, uh, I'll do a quick presentation. My apologies to anyone who uh, was here for uh, the end, the tail end of uh, youth and education. Um, but uh, if you were, then you're going to really know this well. Um, and also, you can uh, give me notes later on and critique me since you've seen it <laughs> twice. So the the budget process uh, for community boards, I, I would argue, is uh, a pillar of, of of importance in terms of uh, what community boards do. Um, the three things that you know in my mind is you know, passing resolutions to make sure that uh, uh, important facts and requests get to in front of the eyes of our elected officials to provide the public uh, a, 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 a public space to to engage with the city with agencies the state the federal government and discuss ideas and the the, the third equally co-equally important is um, uh, putting our requests in for the city budget these requests uh, are uh, as known as the budget request and uh, all of the the requests we make are compiled by the Department of City Planning. And just to give you an idea what this looks like, um, they put it together they, for all 59 boards. And I should have gone through this in youth and education, um, but they'll go through demographic data, really important stuff. Uh, so it gives the reader a really good sense of what uh, the, the makeup is of our district. We have a statement about uh, our district. Uh, which we updated uh, just recently, uh, according to the results of the census, and um, then we list our, our requests. So uh, it's a process that takes about two months on our end, but the district managers of the community boards organize a huge um, uh, uh, process of interviewing agencies in a closed meeting. Uh, and so we get a lot of uh, background information from them, which we try to bring to you. Uh, but in terms of what you do, what's important, I'm sorry, give me one second. Child, please. Um, my son is is uh, uh, getting ready to go to bed, and so he's very thrilled. <laughs> so, um, why? For those of you who are not initiated to the city budget, there's a couple of links with really good background information uh, that's not prepared by me. It's prepared by really smart people who do this for a living. Um, and then uh, also there's some deeper dives into what it makes an expense budget and what makes a capital budget. Um, even if you don't submit anything, uh, going through those links and learning about this, if you're not initiated uh, to this process or these concepts, concepts as the city sees them, um, it does a world of good in terms of deeper, creating a deeper understanding um, uh, for just how everything works. Um, now, that's all in preparation to understand this little doodad here. This is um, a public facing view of a much larger database that we, we maintain here at CB1 of all of our requests, um, how they change over the years and whether or not, and wh what the city's response is to them. So just to go from left to right, we have the, the request name. Uh, column two is the explanation. Column three refers to the target agency for this budget request. Column four, if we know what, a, uh, um, uh, committee the request originated in. We have that information there. The next one is whether it's capital or expense. Uh, I will add that uh, you can sort and filter by any of these columns. So if you're really trying to drill down, uh, this this view allows you to do so. Um, uh, the location, if available. Um, and now this is the real juicy part. But um, what what did OMB say? They, they, the, the agencies report back to OMB. And then they tell us. So when we requested for this current fiscal year, we made the request a year ago. OMB finally told us what the agency said as a result of the of the budget process. 
So this is really helpful because sometimes, um, uh, sometimes they tell us that we're totally out of line. Sometimes they tell us that <laughs> you're, we're, we're barking up the wrong tree of this agency and you're wasting your time with this request. And we really have to take that feedback into consideration because, you know, I mean, what's the definition of insanity? It's doing the same thing twice, expecting a different result. So if they won't be tells us once that, you know, they think that we're ridiculous. Well, these are not, you know, people who are fly by night. This is not the Department of Cultural Affairs. There's no two interpretations for them. That's their stance. So we need to, we need to take that really and, and internalize it. Um, I'll also say that, you know, our requests, um, we, we make sure that they're uh, in the hands of our council member and our borough president. We expect them to fight for uh, what's on our budget request. So we want to give them a really nimble list of really high profile things that we really, really want. Um, and that's why we also want to keep this list, not just, you know, a million things, but you know, let's give, let's give them something that they can fight for. Um, also OMB tells us to limit it as well, but the, the more narrow we are, um, the better. So once you've reviewed all this and you say, well, you know what, I have an idea that's not on the sheet. Uh, I have an idea that uh, maybe it's on the sheet, um, but it could be improved. If it's not in either of those categories, if it's not, if it's either on the sheet, it can be improved, or it's uh, on the sheet and it's been turned down, then don't use this form. But if you have an idea that's not on the sheet whatsoever, use this form. This is how you add something directly into the database. I'm not, I'm not policing this, these requests. Anybody puts a request in here, so you know if uh, if I put the request in, and I select an, a committee. And I, look, I do transportation and I say, this is going to, I want to make this about ferries. So I'll make this EDC since they control the citywide ferry system, not the Staten Island ferry, that would be DOT. And I want to say, um, make, make ferries, God, I was spelling, <laughs> electric, you know, something like that. Then I'll click, I'll just have to click through these to make sure that, um, it categorizes correctly for me, and we'll say citywide, and then I'll hit submit, and then it'll go right into the database. In October, your committee will go through all the ideas and formulate them, shape them, uh, uh, make them stronger, combine them if there's duplicates or there's they're related, and Betty will bring those to the executive committee and fight for their inclusion at a knockdown, drag out brawl. <laughs> Uh, uh, where th they will make a final list, which is then voted on by the full board for the October meeting. So there you have it. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, if you have a question later on, please feel free, do not hesitate to reach out to me. I will try to give you as much time as I can. I am always thrilled when members want to dig into this and do more with this process because it's not as it's not as well known or public facing as the other things that you do but it is no less important um it is maybe even more important uh but i will tell you citywide district managers all say the same thing i have trouble getting my members interested in this process and <laughs> perhaps other branches of city government like it that way because the more we're asleep on this the easier it is for them to just do whatever they want in terms of the budget negotiation but the 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 more clean and and focused we are on this uh the the more that our elected officials will have to be responsive to these needs so i i urge you to uh, join betty betty is one of the most engaged people she, in fact, she's the one who reminded me that I had to do this this month. <laughs> I was I was really focused on the borough budget consultations, but um, so really talk to her as well, get her experience on this. But we, I, every year is better than CB one. There's no doubt about it. Every year is better. So let's make this the best year ever. That's all, Betty. Yeah, thank you. Well, Jess, we go back to the slides because I am a fanatic about the budget. So you're going to learn a lot about it tonight because you're going to get to see what this is only the Department of Transportation issues. So if you go to the next slide, I think that starts it. 
Yeah, first of all, for those wondering what is capital budget, this actually, as you can see, uh, there was a thing at the borough president's office last year, so when Gail Brewer was there. So this is from Scott Stringer when he was comptroller. Uh, the capital eligibility is at least 50,000. For those who are saying what's an expense versus capital, expense. It has useful life of at least five years, except for certain IT equipment, and it may be paid for with borrowing bonds. This is kind of interesting because I did not include a slide that also was included last year about the projected amount that New York City can borrow in bonds, but I can tell you it is plummeting. It used to be, I think up to last year, about 25 billion a year. It's projected within the next year or two, it'll be $5 billion a year. Keep in mind, interest rates are going up, so $5 billion is also unlikely. Tax collections also expected to be going down. So there could be, we're going to be working into a bigger and bigger deficit as time goes on. That's why it's real important to be very key about what we want and what our priority orders are, because it's not going to be everything out there. If, if we don't make choices, we'll just be ignored. So looking for your input, this is last year's, well, it's, it's the current year, it's the fiscal 2023, which started on July, July 1st, yes, of 2022. So we're in the first quarter of fiscal year 2023 at present. And I want to keep in mind, in case you haven't been reading the newspapers in the last day or two, but in fact, uh, huge budget gaps have been announced by the mayor. A weaker economy, less tax revenue, an increased cost of borrowing. Big concerns. He announced to all departments, including the DOT, they must cut their 2023 budget, which we're in right now, by 3%. For those fiscal year budgets, 2024 and onward and after, which is what we're gonna be working on that's new that Lucian was talking about, the, every department must make a 4.75% reduction in their budget from what's been projected in the past. So the departments are all being hit with a lot of cuts. 3% doesn't sound as bad as 4.75, but keep in mind we've already used up more than two, almost a good chunk of the first quarter already, so they can't cut from that. That's already done. So we do need to be rigorous about what we look at and what we do. So if you look at, and if you look in the far left column here, when you say what's the number four, that's our ranking, and this is within capital items. So we want to repair a construction of new curbs, the explanation, continue funding to make Instruction, intersections safe for all users, including available technology techniques, sidewalk ramps, smooth cross cuts. I want you to go to the right column where we have the responses from the agencies and the Office of Management and Budget, which is the mayor's office. And in fact, some of these sidewalks are a responsibility of the adjacent property owners. For curb repairs, please submit locations to the borough commissioner for review, pedestrian ramps, Anyway, the bottom line is this is probably not specific enough to be very actionable. So I am not going to particularly recommend that this be conti continued. But I want quick input if anyone feels elsewise. Otherwise, I would agree with your with your your analysis. The city, you know, the bigger picture is the city has agreed to rebuild uh, 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 these these uh, corners, and so I think if we if we would probably be better serving the community to create a database of uh, corners that are in desperate need of being modernized uh, according to yeah. that and, and submitting that to DOT. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We can do that through resolution or other mechanisms, but so I wasn't right. talking about ignoring them. I'm talking about this is probably not the best way of doing it. That's right. Since I see no comments otherwise, let's go on to number six ranking. Uh, this was for Canal Street which long needed improvements. And what's important, if you look, you'll see that, uh, in fact, the DOT agrees that they plan on conducting a study. So I would tend to continue this one. It can't be a continued, it has to be re-entered because they haven't started funding it yet. 
So anyone opposed? Because we also have a resolution about this. So it is supporting something we've already stated was important. Yeah, and this is something that I'll I'll go back and double check with the borough office to see if they've received the amount of money that they need to do this study. Um, because if, if they haven't, then we'll have to definitely keep it on so they get the rest of the balance that they need. But if it is fully funded, um, then I'll, I can circle back so you, we can take this down. Great, because then it can go to continued support. Because again, until it's done, there could be more cuts or other things that it doesn't need to be ranked, but it could be under the continued support. And to make it clear to people, because I also forgot to mention this, the OMB, which is the Office of Management and Budget, uh, suggest, well, suggest, they mean 40 capital items should be the limit, and we will exceed 40 each year. And that 25 expense items, and we did double that. So we do need to do cutting because we're way over limits without adding anything. So, yeah, thank you for looking into this one, Lucian, and we can proceed depending on what the response is for the amount of funding available. Although I am concerned about the cuts that are going to be coming. The next page, actually, since I'm going to tell you, because they're somewhat repetitive and that they're dealing with the cobblestone streets that are in really poor repair. Although they've had their temporary improvements, if you look at it, this is where we're going to get into some problems in that we see them as still needing a lot of work, which in capital items would be rebuilding, but they're responding with, oh, well, we fixed them short term, which means to them they're done and they can close it. Realistically, capital budgets to package all these, I'll talk to Lucian about what we're going to do because it may be, we may be better off to package some of these together that are in the same neighborhood versus making them all separate items. But any comments? Seeing no hands raised. Oh, oh Carrie. Yeah, because you're on one of those blocks. And welcome to one of our new our new public member. Here, you're you're I'm in now. Moved to panel. Yeah, sorry, you're in. So, Carrie, you can unmute yourself and just speak. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Um, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm, I, I joined a little late, so I don't want to interfere. The, um, the cobblestone streets, the one that I know has been on the agenda for a decade is Staple Street. I don't know. Yeah, if that's, that's, that's further down. Okay. Because that's one I think that might be carved out because it's a different kind of, um, of request. It's not just a, uh, a transit request, it's sort of a preservationist request. And I don't know if you treat those separately when you, when you put no, these all of these are all of these are in historic district. So they have the same issues. Okay. I just was thinking if you were gonna lump them together, you might keep that one separate. Uh, I, was looking I don't know the process back. well enough to opine. So I'll, I trust your judgment, Betty. Yeah, well, it's going to go to Lucian. It's just if we really need to reduce the number, and the DOT has already said they're probably not going to fund these one by one. It's going to be more packaging, but they could be done within the historic district by historic district. Right. Okay. Thank you. So at least they're with their neighboring streets. Uh, Mimi? Yeah, I just want to make sure um, since I can't necessarily like scroll through this, and I don't really remember the name of the street, but the street that um, that one gentleman fell on and then. Oh, we'll, we'll get, don't worry about naming. Oh, okay. we're, we're, we've got a whole bunch of them. Okay. So long as it's included, point. that's all that really matters. Okay. That's why I want you to see the pattern here of what the DOT responses are. And it tends to be the same thing. That temporary repairs have been made. Period. Let's go on to the next one then. So you can see just how many there are, which is why there may be some interest in. Putting some of them together, I'm not talking about deleting any of them. Yeah, and you can see there's more of the same. There was one in there. Yeah, if you go up, there was one of them in there where they have actually work scheduled. 
say they do. Tried to read fast enough to, there is one of the streets, of the cobblestone streets, where they say that they're going to work within it. Yeah, South End Avenue is a whole different story, and that's, let's deal with that one. Just so you're aware that it's there. Uh, it's up, you're going too fast for me. Sorry, what, which one are you looking for now? South End Avenue? South End Avenue. Yeah, ah, this is it, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, and there is a duplication of South End Avenue, so I'm where well, that'll come up later. This one is because work is planned, but I don't know what the starting date is. Again, that's part of why there's no it, need more and more information. That's really waiting for the starting date. This will probably be mostly funded by the Battery Park City Authority anyway. But I am not for, I, I am talking about continuing this unless there are any comments about why we should drop this one. Well, isn't that going to be part of their whole resiliency and rebuild down there? No. Okay. No, this is separate. Okay. Yeah, and this is something that uh, the authority is moving towards the next design phase for, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a little, it's, it's, it's close, but it's a different project. Okay. What, what portion of it is the, the city going to be funding? Well, that's the unknown, which is why it just says that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Battle Park City is a, is a real weird place when it comes to the streets because the city only has real jurisdiction over a portion of them. Uh, yeah. But the, uh, it's unclear what that means for big capital projects. The impression that I got from comments made in the past is that there is a lot of, if the authority wants something done, they are. It's the agreement with the city of New York as well, with how they spend their ground rent and other revenues that come in. That if they want to get something done within their own borders, they're somewhat expected to come up with their own money rather than using city money to do some of the work. But it's also more expeditious to do that, which I think is another reason the authority sometimes decides to do it. Right. So I think that's the main one. I was going to say, so it, it's just a different animal. And so it's put in here with if there's anything be prepared to contribute that amount. But it's, it's an existing agreement that nobody knows exactly what the details are. Got it. So that's why it's vague, but there's a reason for that. Okay, next one. Did we just go past one? The numbers are going too fast, okay. Sorry. I think it does skip from. I know it does. I found it was doing that for me too. So. 18 to 24. Uh, yes, because DOT isn't the only agency the budget right. store. Yeah. Okay, number 24. Again, this is another one. This was for audible pedestrian signal installation. And again, if you look at it, they, the comment is, I think it's too vague. My point is, this is another one where I think we're better off to drop it. This isn't the way to do it. This isn't the best way of getting these changes made. Because there are multiple criteria. They include, I've, you can see them online. Uh, this really can't address them. So we're better off to deal with using a different mechanism. Just like with street corners. And again, this is another one like street corners uh, that is mandated by a lawsuit. So it's going to happen. I just don't think this is the best mechanism for doing it. So I would continue, consider dropping this. Lucian, what do you think? Yeah, I'd agree. I think that that's just like the just like the crossing. Um, this is something that we could compile, we could send, you know, a couple members of the, the committee out uh, to survey locations along West Street and uh, see where these audi audible counters are not present. No, to, no you know, uh, document it, and then we can set it officially into DOT. Well, and the issue is actually broader than that, because it could be Center Street as well, where you're talking about government sure. functions. Sure, we could, we could uh, crawl through the oh, district and, and look but, at our- I can tell you, one of the criteria is you must have groups they're advocates. 
for that population who support those particular locations. And that's when I contacted the mayor's office for people with disabilities to get some leads on places, some of the groups that could be helpful and never got a response from them. And then there's no commissioner any longer for moped. So this is going to take some work and I don't think it belongs in the city budget. So unless there's any objections, I would probably recommend that number 24 go. And actually, I think number 28 as well. Yeah, they seem to be similar. Yeah, although that one they're a little bit wrong with because it's a very specific location for one very specific one. And they say, give us a location. <laughs> Give you a location. But this is another problem in that it is on West Street and West Street is a state highway, is a state road. And so in other ones they'll talk about, it's, it's out of jurisdiction, so the DOT won't do anything anyway. So I think number 28, so it has to be dropped for other reasons. Yeah, and also, you know, having an one, entire one of our budget slots dedicated to getting one audible thing for one street corner, it's like, you know, building a, nu a nuclear reactor when a you know, AA battery would suffice. You know, this, these are really precious kind of positions on our chart, which is, you know, only for like a, you know, $40 piece of kit. <laughs> See, you're learning more about budgets than you wanted to know. So 24 and 28, we'll talk about getting rid of those. Uh, request number 29. Oh, this is for 42 Trinity. Uh, I'm going to talk to Lucian about this, but have, isn't this done? So this is, I think this is referring to the capital rebuild of Edgar Street, but it seems like that's it not going to be like we're, we're the board is backing off of its um, enthusiasm of of that. Um, so I, I don't think this will likely make it next round, especially um, as we see how the pick up and drop off situation go after the construction fencing drops in that location. They may just drop it entirely. Well, I was going to say, I, I think that number 29 should go because also once the condo opens in the same building, but opens onto Greenwich Street, it would be nice if they didn't fill it in. And in fact, the east, the westbound lane could be operational on nights and weekends. That would take a lot of the pressure off of Cedar Street. It would also give more faster access on Greenwich Street to the same building that the school is in. Yeah, I think I think as as time moves on, I think this this request is more and more dubious. Okay, so we'll look at getting rid of twenty nine. Next one. Okay, thirty. Well, we, this was the dugout space, and this came out of actually the parks committee, and I see no change in the requirement or desire to get some of this space. And as you can see, the borough commissioner's office is reviewing this request. It does look like they're planning some access to make this more public space. But this will probably happen in the future, so I'd be very loath to drop it. In fact, I'd probably increase the priority. Any comments? And Rose, I know you're here. I, I would love it if we could increase it, uh, move it up the priority list. Thank you. And it's absolutely going to happen. And I would support that. We need more open space. Okay, so we'll look at increase in priority for item number 30. When we get to number 31, this was additional public restrooms in our neighborhood. Again, since I'm on the public bathroom working group, I have to definitely not drop this one. And again, the agency will try to accommodate within existing resources. It means they're not saying no, and they're not saying that it's not clear. So any complaints about just leaving, not doing any, leaving this one? I mean, they, they literally have it in a warehouse in Queens somewhere. <laughs> okay, this one stays. And again, hopefully priority will go up. We need bathrooms. Uh, number 32. 
Traffic calming for second place and battery place. I went down and looked at it, and in fact, this is completed. There's a four-way stop sign in there now, as well as crosswalks have been painted on the road. So I think this one is considered complete, and there's no point continuing it at this point. This one, PS89 and IS289, they asked, and I have no idea who suggested this, but it's been here for many years, and they want a mid-block crosswalk across Warren Street. And I can tell you, I am very against this. So I'd have to hear somebody who's for it before I'd do anything but suggest that this be eliminated. Well, I guess I would just, I'm new, so I'll just ask the question. Um, isn't that because they want to be able to have access to the ball field for PE? Uh, I can tell you that the so-called argument, this, it is only about 20 feet to get to the corner where there is a light. They can also go to the other corner. There, this block of Warren Street has light signals at both ends of the street. So the fact that they want to go out between parked cars on what is a bus route so that kids don't have to walk to the corner so they can go get exercise, I find a little surprising. But I can tell you they walk over to Rockefeller Park to use it, and so they don't mind walking that distance. And this is why I'm the rookie. <laughs> so points well taken. Thank you, Betty. Yeah, and so I used to see a school that, telling kids to cross illegally. This is something that um, it would be helpful if, you know, Rosa, if you, if you could take this back to the youth education or, or directly to one of the principals, if you know them, um, because I think would to get we need input from them is if there's anything more compelling uh, that under underlies this. Um, if not, then or if they don't even want it anymore, then it would be very safe to say there's no constituency left for this item. Yeah, I also think I'll find that I, I don't actually know the principal there, but I'll ask Trisha. I'm sure that she or Wendy knows them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and keep in mind, they have now passed, there is now a new rule that if you had a crosswalk in mid block, so not only do you have it at the beginning, this is not a long block. You have them at both ends, and then you put one in the middle. Buses, and this is a bus route. Buses have to come to, as well as all vehicles, have to come to a complete stop, as well as do all cyclists, at any crosswalk. So this adds a lot of inconvenience in what's already a backed up road, especially when children are being picked up after school. So I think it's a bad idea on many levels and I can't imagine the DOT having the authorization to do it, even if they wanted to. Um, I mean, I think mid box cross, crosswalks are great on long blocks. They're, they're a good amenity, but I don't know that street well enough to be able to say yes or no, but I did want to say I want bathrooms to be high on the list. <laughs> I very appreciate it. Yeah, this is a, this is one direction in each one uh, lane in each direction. It's not a it's not a super big road as Lauren Street. But like I said, the MTA bus goes down here. For the Staten Island Express buses. I mean, mid block crosswalks are a nice amenity for pedestrians and in general, we'd like more pedestrian uh, infrastructure so pedestrians can go according to their desire lines. But uh, I haven't looked at that street, that particular one. So I, oh I, I'm comfortable with removing things because we have too many on the list. Yeah, besides, then they'd have to also put in a sidewalk ramp because otherwise you couldn't cross mid block, which would get rid of even more parking, which will make other people upset. So, Rosa, thank you for looking into that one, but I am very much for getting rid of it. And I live in this neighborhood, I think is a horrible idea, and I don't know how it ever got on here in the first place. That's just me. Number 36, uh, making intersections safe for all users. Yeah, again, the auditory signals. I, again, I would drop this for the same reason I've said with the other ones. 
they require criteria that aren't particularly conducive to this particular mechanism. Uh, they're mandated by law anyway. We need to just put together requests that are specific outside the budget. I, I agree. They're already mandated by law. Number 37, yeah, this is also the reconstruction of South End Avenue. Lucian, this is a duplication. I'm going to put it here for reducing, eliminating because of the duplicate. Great, awesome, thank you. Sure. Uh, number 38. Oh, this one is pretty easy. Uh, dealing with the Greenway, but if you look, the location is not city owned. It is state property. So this is a good one to get rid of because again, it doesn't belong in this mechanism because it's not city budget, it's state. So if we want to do it, it has to be done through resolution or something else to ask the state DOT to look at it. Number 39. State DOT has jurisdiction. So for the turn of Albany and, and West Street intersections, I'm going to also, unless there are other objections, I'm going to ask to eliminate this one too, since they tell us it doesn't belong to the New York City DOT anyway. I'm cleaning things out, Fiat Lucian. Number Use 40. <laughs> well, here's another one for you. Wanting a bus stop in front of PS 276, which is set in South Battery Park City. One, the MTA is, again, a state agency. They would be the ones that have to make the decision and put it there. So they're saying, you know, contact them if you want to know directly where it is. This would be directly across the street from the resiliency project due to start next month. So I'm also not sure the MTA would be particularly thrilled about if they liked the spot. The next two years wouldn't be the time particularly to do it anyway. But Lucian, what's your guidance on this one? Wrong jurisdiction, drop it or? Well, the bus stop, and Eric might be able to correct me on this, but um, the construction of a bus stop, DOT does the street furniture. I think, I'm pretty sure DOT has the street furniture uh, contract. So they they you know MT would decide whether or not to send buses and how many, but DOT would be responsible for for the construction and maintenance of that stop itself. So, but there isn't a stop there now. So you don't well, need the MTA to decide to add one there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think having having that there, I think. If the MTA were to say okay, then maybe the DOT would look and say, well, this is something that the community board wants us to do. You know, it would it would help maybe kind of put stack our hand when they come together for a meeting and say, so what are we doing here? And the DOT says, well, the community board, you know, they want us to build out a bus stop here. Can you run a bus? Um, we don't see any problem with it. You know, philosophically, maybe that would help them come to a a faster decision on it instead of having and hauling. However, that's that's purely speculative on my part. I, I haven't um, haven't been at a meeting between the MTA and the, the, the you know the bus division and and DOT about this. So I'm not sure if that's something that would grease the skid. But maybe Eric might have some insight on that. Um, I I don't work in that area, but from my colleagues that I do know, it's you're right. It's it's owned by the bus stops are are, are um, owned by DOT, but it's a it's a collaborative decision. So if this is important, I think it should stay here. Where where it, it is, even though the MTA is a state agency, it, it it's under the jurisdiction of the DOT as well. So just I think maybe having it just in the chance that that decision you know opportunity comes up that. Maybe there's some weight to it. I, I don't know. I, I I can definitely see some strategic value in it, um, even if it isn't 
kind of the clearest, purest budget request. However, you know, if facing a, a dilemma between this and another very much deserving item, I would, you know, definitely say consider the other item. But, um, you know, do we're, we're eliminating a lot of slots here. So I think. I say, yeah, do people agree that we just keep it and then see if it's in conflict with the numbers that we need to achieve? We worry about it then. But if Betty needs that... to fight for our items, then maybe she'll jettison it. But if if it seems like we're not not having to fight for it, then maybe we can leave it in, something like that. Yeah. So leave it to the executive committee. To just make it, I'll, I'll just make sure that, that I inform people if it gets down to there needs to be cutting done. And they're going to do the cuts. Okay, we'll leave 40 then, 41. Ah, this one, and this also has somewhat of a duplicate within the expense items. So that's gonna have to be dealt with, but this was to do some education and enforcement around human powered and electrical powered bicycle riding on sidewalks. And as you'll notice, it says the agency will accommodate the issue within existing resources. In fact, they have done some public education on Twitter and some of those sorts of things. Which doesn't make it seem like a capital item so I will list it as something to be looked at as for being cut from this and leaving the expense item. What do you think, Lishan? I think that um, leaving that on will bring a lot of satisfaction and, and comfort to a number of members. Um, I don't. I think that taking it off is creating more of a fight than uh, is worth. Can we move it to continued support? Usually, my understanding is continued support is really reserved for capital items that have been funded, but um, uh, you want to make okay. sure the funding doesn't get stolen. Right, such as on the some of the road reconstructions. So for like spend stuff, really don't want to to apply continued support. Uh, yeah, this is an expense. This is listed as a capital item, number 41. Yeah, so that should definitely be expense then. Okay, it's 41. Then I will look at getting rid of that one in capital because it is in expense. The same item is also listed as an expense item. Right, definitely, definitely expense. Okay. Let's go on. You can see why we, we're way over because it's supposed to be 40 maximum. Oh, this one I know is Rose's one of her beliefs, so she can fight for this one. But this was to make the uh, intersection at Pearl Street to improve it. Again, it is really terrible. Pearl at Frankfurt Street is dangerous and needs some upgrading, no question. Any objections with keeping it and in fact, trying to increase priority? What do you think, people? If I may speak to this issue uh, uh, really briefly, we have significant numbers of um, seniors and mobility impaired living on either side of this intersection. And it is, you know, much, much longer than any intersection and intersected with so many on ramps and off ramps. It's really a hazardous crossing area. And I feel like it just has to be addressed. It absolutely is a safety issue in our neighborhood. Okay, so we'll look at number 53, increasing priority, since I hear no objections to that. Number 54, repair or provide new streetlights. This is to replace the non the non-historic street lamps with uh, Bishop Crook street lamps or best fitting contextual alternative within the historic districts. So very specific where I can tell you what this says. Please contact the borough commissioner with specific locations of concern. I can tell you the previous year, the response was, take this to your council person. Uh, that's where it's better funded. Lucian, do you have a comment that might enlighten if we should leave it or make it, just leave it as the lower priority or what we should do? 
maybe maybe we maybe this is the year where we should just turn this into a resolution. Um, we we create our own new category for um, councilmatic uh, discretionary funds, and just say, please buy three distinctive light fixtures for Worth Street. And between blank and blank, you know, essentially on either side of the um, of uh, the um, the telecom hotel. I can't I can't remember the name of it, but that's that's what they're requested. Is this to address a particular location? Is that why it's on here? It's a it's a very specific location. Yeah, it's a it's a it's an intervention to replace three LED lights. Uh, that were installed on a block that's in the historic district, uh, or is it, it, it's on an individual landmark and maybe adjacent to a historic district. But um, it was it's it's a very has a very long, uh, colorful history. But we've been trying all sorts of ways to replace those lights, and this was the best uh, attempt that we've made to to do so. Is this think, the 60 Hudson, the, that the telecom building you're thinking of on Worth? Yeah, 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 60 Hudson. And did yeah. they were- and On the north side, they, 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 didn't, they, didn't, they didn't object to it. Um, they're not responsible for the lights, right. um, but they didn't object. And so the request is made not from the building, but from the historic, from a historic preservationist point of view to- uh, the, there's kind of two angles to it. One is that um, they would be more appropriate uh, alongside this building. Uh, the other side of it is that um, the type of light that would come out of these uh, fixtures wouldn't be as blinding as the ones that are there. Uh, we've had a, a lot of vociferous complaints um, for people who walk out their front doors and they're, they're blinded by the, the LED lights. They're not, there's no, there's no um, there's no uh, kind of diffuser yeah, underneath of the exposed LEDs. So these right. Bishop Crook lights have, you know, a, like a translucent kind of frosted. Yes, we have uh, the bulb. same. In, I understand because we have the same thing in Dwayne Park, and um, and they're still very bright. That's why I'm, I'm asking the question because sometimes people ask for the. Bishop's Crook because they think they're going to get a diffused light, but it's still a very high LED. Um, and it's not the warm glow that they think, but um, so I'm asking out of because I've, I'll, I'll direct one of the, the complaints to go and. Fix and their take, eyes on that and take a look um, from a budgetary point of view. They're not expensive and DOT does not want to maintain them once they're installed. So um, my experience with that is just that once you have the Bishop's Crook, they, they, um, they are not keen on maintaining them. So the, the property owner adjacent to them sometimes has to take on more of the maintenance uh, than is maybe they understand at the outset. That's great feedback. Thank you. Yeah, in fact, Carrie, would you mind being a, a contact if need if there's a complainant that wants to do this in particular to? Absolutely. This is an issue that we've, yes, you can yeah, sign since, me up to since work. Since you're experienced with it from Dwayne Park. Yes, you can sign me up to work on this one. <laughs> Thanks, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, So let's let's definitely consider knocking this one out too. I'll talk to uh, the complainant about being more surgical about this, um, but I'll ask him to do uh, their due diligence to have a look at the Dwayne Park um, installation to see if um, it's any better than what they have right now. In their opinion. So, are you considering then knocking this one and the and the other one out of the budget, or? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I think maybe from our official budget request, um, we we can ask Marte's office uh, what form 
he would prefer this because if we're if we've been advised we're, we're kind of getting bobbled back and forth a little bit of a rope a dope between them telling us to be specific uh and then also to uh, ask our council member to to go from their discretionary funding um, we can ask Marte's office what form is best you know this request is best relayed to them if it's just a standalone resolution saying we want council member Marte to use his discretionary funding for this then so be it we don't need to put it in our pro our priorities list because there, there, there are different DMT. mechanisms for yeah, right. I think no, the I to spin up a, a, a budgetary program for this. Otherwise, I yeah, I I understand that. Um, I would I would I, I'm so new to this process that I <laughs> hesitate to say anything. So um, I just would not want my experience to uh, foreclose an opportunity that's been on here a long time, and that perhaps complainants have a legitimate you know, issue with um, when I'm so new to this process. So I don't want to. Well, uh, have no fear. I don't think do you're that. going to spoil anything or foreclose mm -hmm. any opportunities. Yeah. I think what we're looking for is fresh perspective on how to how to get these things done um, without mm -hmm. just kind of getting the same response year after year. And I think um, if it didn't work this year, we could always, we know there's enough continuity on this committee that we could just put it back on okay. if necessary. But. I don't, I, you know, it hasn't worked for a number of years. <laughs> um, so right. it's, it's certainly worth trying something new. And, uh, and, and these, I think that would be in, And these lights uh, are not expensive. Effort. As long as DOT maintains them, they're not expensive. They're 300, they're $3,000 a piece. 60 Hudson could, like there are, uh, anyway. So I'm, a, I'm just, just sharing experiences and I'm here to learn. So. Yeah, no, thank you. Any for your patience as I ask all these questions. It may not even be a capital item, but yes, no, the, the person who wants them should be made realistic. I'm happy to, I'm sure I'm they happy really to be do. a liaison um, in sharing my experience with the Bishop's crew. Uh, everyone really quick, this is, this is totally non sequitur to what we're talking about, but if you haven't signed in the attendance sheet yet, I just put the link in the chat. So take a second to do that while we keep talking about these budget items. Thank you. I have a quick question. Sorry, but didn't you say at the very beginning of the budget discussion that the cost of these things should all be a minimum of fifty thousand dollars? Why is that? That probably you know has to also be looked at because it sounds like it's not a capital. That's why I said it doesn't look like it's yeah, a capital. It's probably, right. probably not capital, but um, right. Fly with the bazooka. Enough of them to get over fifty thousand dollars, and it would be. But if you had enough of them, you'd have to get a lot of people responsible for looking after them too. Well, the, one, the, other, one, the other thing is, once yeah. you if you get ten of them and you add in mobilization and all of the agency contracting fees, you can get to fifty thousand pretty fast. I think one example that I always like to give people um, is you you can't buy one laptop and make it capitally <laughs> eligible, but if you buy a cart that's filled with laptops, that is a capital item. Because you're buying one, you, the quantity is one thing that is over fifty thousand dollars because it's jack full of laptops, and so they treat it as one one thing, so that it's capital eligible. Well, that means we really need to have a list of where they're going to be, whether it ends up going onto this budget or whether it ends up city budget or it ends up going to the council person. Uh, they kind of need to know how many and where they're located to justify them. Yeah, and, and not to just not to belabor this, but also coming out of the council members discretionary budget may help motivate uh, uh, the, the agency to to do whatever other things that they need to do in, in terms of getting their distinctive lighting person to go and look at the site and do, you know, that's what they I think that's what they don't want to do is get their distinctive lighting person involved uh, uh, because it's a pain. But when it comes from the council members discretionary budget, then that may have a totally different light but a totally different light if i may yeah and like i said in past years i went back to the comments from past fiscal years that was the comment that came from the dot was go to your council person <laughs> so it's continued 
support. The CS is what it stands for. Betty, I would just run through these. These these don't take up any of our slots. We can have as many of these as, as we have projects that are funded. So I don't think we have to litigate these. It's, as yeah, they drop no, and off. it's fine. It's just I still question that it's interesting they didn't put that this is out of jurisdiction and this is also state road, but that's just another point. But honestly, it's probably an intern who with a attitude problem. Well, that's kind of my point. <laughs> Looking at expense items, everything from placard approval protocols, which is a little, I, I don't know. These really belong here, but any comments? Then for now, I'll leave it, but I see problems with it. Uh, number, is there number, somewhere, is there somewhere I can learn about like how this um, maybe Lucian, you and I can, or Betty and I can just talk for a little bit. Like, what does this mean? Continued expansion of placard technology and approval po protocols. It's a problem. That's, so this may be related to um, the Blasio's announcement that they were modernizing placard tech. They're going right. to implement like you know barcodes or some other kind of wacky stuff. You know, they they did a whole bunch of like dog and pony show stuff to. Uh, 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 try to make up for the fact that there was no enforcement going on. Um, I so I think that I think it, I think it was in relation to that. But we could certainly it was. tune in the language to be, you know, either uh, in in line with what was written. Um, as I think there's some legislation that was passed on this, so we can make sure that that's a funded mandate. Um, but we, you know, there's a little work we could do to make this tighter. Yeah, I agree, and it's, it's also problematic because it's been defunded. So there are no units to do it anyway, but. Right, that's why I was asking, because I remember a whole meeting dedicated to the fact that there was no enforcement. Yes, I question, if nothing else, the priority level. I know it's an annoyance, but the realities of it's probably not gonna be done anyway. So we'll keep that in mind when we get to higher levels. For now, uh, from committee, I'll leave it. Oh, if you look at number 08, zero, eight, it looks like they've already made the improvements they plan on making on a temporary basis. What do people think of this one? For, this is around the jail detention center construction. I, I would say, given what they're saying, it looks like just drop this one for now. Uh, I, I agree with that. Lucian, any insights? I would say anything MDC related, I would just hold until executive, because uh, there's, there's a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of uh, uh, well-staked up positions on that. And I think that um, that should be litigated at the end, because um, otherwise it's just gonna say like, how oh, wise is gone? and and uh, anyway, yeah, I would. Yeah, I would no, I on. agree. Everything's going to be done at executive. I just want to know if anyone on this committee felt strongly one way or another. Okay, let's move on to the next one then, and we'll leave it. Oh, John Street. This is again supporting some that we had a resolution on. So my goal would be to keep this. Any objections? No hands. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, open restaurants. This one is kind of interesting. If you look at the DOT response, they've begun the process for implementation of the program. In other words, for increasing the staffing to oversight of the program, they're saying, well, we, we didn't even start it yet. Any modification? Again, I guess it has to go on. Unless there are any comments from people. I don't know that we know anything to make it any different either way. Okay, I'll leave that for now. Number 17 isn't ours. That's just there because I didn't cut it out. Uh, number 18, 
pilot education enforcement activities to reduce human powered. This is the expense item that I told you is already in here, Lucian. So if it's cut from capital, here it is as number 18 expense. So we'll leave it here. Next. Oh, the turn from southbound 9A onto Albany Street. Again, the location is not city owned. Am I okay with dropping this one simply for that reason or leave it? You know, for all these state ones, I think that we should just put together a resolution with all the state things and I'll send it to our state elected officials. Sounds good. Traffic or parking studies, audit of curbside parking regulations. I don't really even understand this one. Uh, the agency will try to accommodate this issue within existing resources. Where do we go from on this one? Just leave it. Try to clean it up a bit. No feedback, we'll move on and leave it to another level. Conduct a Battery Park City North Neighborhood Traffic Study. The comment on this, the location is not city owned. And again, this street is controlled by the Battery Park City Authority. I also live near this street and personally I am not for this. So, is it okay to drop this item because it's, it's jurisdictionally a problem anyway? No comments? Okay, I will suggest dropping yeah, it and let's... I, I don't know. This is this is kind of weird. I, I feel I like I feel like this is almost a mistake. Um, being here or so dropping it. DOT is still responsible for traffic, even if they're not responsible for you know the maintenance of the street. I feel like this is this you know, they, I think they're being a little too literal. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. I, 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 it's one of those, like, this is a message more than an actual request. Um, but, um, you know, I, so I think technically you could discard it since their, you know, their position is, is such, but I, I, I don't, I don't think they're correct. Um, I don't think, yeah, I just don't, I don't think they're, they're, I think they're kind of viewing this as well. We don't have jurisdiction, but they are responsible for for this because, you know, just because their maintenance requirement ends midway through the block, doesn't mean that their you know, overall traffic considerations are. And yeah, you know, I don't know. I, I I'm a little disappointed that that's the the answer for DOT. Uh, yeah, no, that was a little surprising. Well, we'll leave it to go to another level because, like I said, I don't see the point of doing it in the first place, but it is a problem, but it's completely unenforceable problem. So traffic study isn't going to change it in the slightest anyway. But number 40, provide funding for the impact of the Holland Tunnel related traffic on Canal Street and Late Street. I see no problem with continuing it. Any comments in opposition? Seeing none, move is on there, to number four. Are, are we allowed to like increase priority on this one? Like, or is that just for capital projects? No priority, uh, correct Lucian, that everything is set by the district the way the district wants to do it. Yeah, so, um, you know, priority is something that Diane and I typically kind of did the ordering, um, but I, I can, I, I tried not to, leave it to the executive committee to do it because then the fight lasts about four hours longer because everyone's just kind of, you know, trying to get their, their stuff to number one or close to it. Uh, so I will, I will make a note that that should be higher, but uh, I'll just say that, that the ordering is typically done by the office uh, with a couple of things here and there, but the chair in the office, uh, chair of the vice chair in the office do most of that. 
Okay. I was going to say, because if you go back to last year, you can look at the executive committee in October. We did not do item by item at all. So there was no setting of priorities at executive. I was on the community board, um, you know, a couple number of years ago, and most of the fighting was over the ordering <laughs> and, and not like honing in on anything and, and making these better. These lists just overall, it's like, these items we have, how do we make these better? It was all just everyone jockeying to get their, you know, their their stuff as high as possible. And it kind of just made a, a mockery of the entire thing. So I, I want to make sure we're just focusing on making solid budget requests. And then, um, you know, the leadership in the office will work to try to make a, a strategic ordering. Okay, thank you. That I understand now. So the, the capital piece, we set sort of the budgetary priorities within our committee for capital, but the expense piece is just part of the larger budget and the executive committee and the office manage that process. No, the, no. You, you'll set, you'll set your, your stuff for capital and expense and Betty will take those to the executive committee meeting and the executive committee will hash it out of what ultimately goes onto our CB1 uh, uh, district district uh, priorities. I see. And the, the numbering is something that will happen uh, outside of that process. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I wanted to go through, and you won't see this in other committees, to get some input because if nothing else, Lucia can hear kind of the sentiment of a broader group of members, which usually is pretty absent in this process. Uh, 41 for the conduct traffic or parking studies. This is to do with cargo bike parking. Again, I will tend to leave it unless people think it needs to be reworded or. Great. Go on to I mean, the next it looks item. Like the, it looks like yeah. the agency is funding that. So, you know, I tried to get the agencies to come in for a district budget consultation. And that's when, like, a number of these items, they would tell me, oh, right out, like, this is funded. But for some reason, the agencies were impossible to get for district budget consultations this year. Um, but I think, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get any feedback between now and when you all do the, the final discussion on these things. But, uh, but it does look like the agency said this is a good idea. And, um, you know, we can accommodate this with. Our, our fiscal year 23 money. So to me, it looks like this is funded. It does to me too. Again, things are going to be a little rocky because of the announcement of the reductions they must make in 2023 and 2024. It's going to take these agencies a while to work that out. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I, I wouldn't be surprised though if a lot of these agencies are, are just going to eliminate. Uh, the positions that they're having trouble hiring for. I, I think that it's going to be a lot of like personal services reductions. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful that some of these. Well, items the mayor started. specifically said it cannot be done by reduction of of positions. Oh well, there you go. I haven't got my own yes. guidance yet. It says expect, expects plans to be by agencies. Do not find reductions in office. Any reductions, otherwise the Office of Management and Budget will make the savings, will find the savings. So we'll see. Can't be fined by laying off workers or imposing new fines or fees. That seems like, whoa. Next. This is going to be a challenging time for budgets. Yeah, again, another one with placards. So. This will have to be taken on with, with wording. If there aren't any comments, I think this is the last one. So hopefully. Yeah, this is the last one and kind of interesting because in fact, Streets Blog just did a thing on placards in our district. So at least around the Civic Center. So we may have this information just because somebody else did it even if the DOT doesn't. Next one, because I think this is the end of this. 
Uh, yes, so I want to tell people what I, I've looked at things for to add that I intend to add to the fiscal year 2024. Uh, I want to work with the agencies, CB1 and the stakeholders to plan and implement at least one FIDI pedestrian priority project. I realized somehow that item got dropped from the budget last year. No idea why. Uh, and another thing that we've asked for in resolution, work with the, with sanitation, the police and the fire department and community stakeholders like, like CB1 and FIDI Neighbors Association, develop a vision for the FIDI street plan that can be used to guide and coordinate future projects. Again, that comes from our resolution. Uh, support Park Row improvements north of the Brooklyn Bridge. And that was supported by Park Row Alliance. This came out of the Parks Committee. Uh, design install a continuous protected bike lane to directly connect the Brooklyn Bridge and Hudson River Park bike lanes, which we've had people coming forward from our district asking for. And then something about cobblestone streets plan, and I have to work with Lucian on ideas. And Carrie, I'll pull you in on this. I have something to send to you anyway, but I'm really concerned that nothing is moving forward and I have a good sense of what the problems are. We need to have an item that addresses the underlying problems for this whole process. I'm not, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure what that refers to. Is that co connected to, to cobblestones in particular or something generally? Yes. Okay. No, because of the many problems and I'll send you a copy of the resolution. Well, I'll send you a copy that'll get you up to speed with what the issues are from the DOT with why this goes on year after year with the same street requests. Yes, I, it, I have lived through the cobblestoning requests for Duane Street for many years, and, and the issue is very divided on whether or not that's a, anyway, you'll bring me up to speed, and I will try to do my best to catch up with you guys. Yeah, no, this was to take over some of the underlying problems in the process, oh. not really being on either side of what happens, it's just moving the process forward. Oh, yeah, there's lots there. I look yes. forward to it. <laughs> uh, as well as, okay, Lucian has already done this last item, so we're done with that. Everybody else, please feel free to enter, but I wanted to let you know that those other things I haven't forgotten, otherwise Patrick would have had a fit saying, what happened to the Make Way for Lower Manhattan kind of project? It is not forgotten. It was last year. Yeah, this is for the safety user issues on bike lane uses on West Broadway and Church Street. I'm going to leave this for now because I found out one, first of all, this person, the scooter rider uh, has died. So it isn't just a serious injury. It was actually a death. But it appears that there is an investigation going on right now. So there's no point dealing until we get the results of the investigation. So Lucian, I'll ask you to follow that up as it becomes available. And we'll take it on next month with if it's if resolution is called for to improve those bike lanes to solve the issue that may have led to this. An investigation by um, by who? Is it? I'm not completely clear on who is doing it because it didn't say I mean, DOT, but. I can talk to NYPD and see if they can share anything about that. Yes, and it was in the Tribeca Tribune. I'll also pull that article where they report that it okay. was sent for an investigation. Okay, thanks. So yeah, a follow up on that. Uh, next one. Yeah, because for those who want to know, there was an article in Streets Blog, and it was also in the Tribeca Tribune. And the person, the driver, was turning left off of Church Street, which is a one-way northbound, onto Thomas Street, which is a one-way westbound. So crossing, the car would have been turning, crossing the lane that the scooter user was using. And there is a traffic signal at that intersection. Uh, and there is a floating parking lane that protects, so it's considered protected. So we'll take this issue on next month, but we'll have to get more information to decide if it's what we do. Transportation rule updates. And this is very long and detailed, but there are a couple I want to point out, and I will also send to all of you a link to see where you can see all of these CAPA changes. There's one I want you to see for sure. Uh, these are the annual CAPA regulatory agendas. This does, it does not include everything that's being done because things can come up during the year. 
and not all agencies do it, so it doesn't include all, but I've given you, there's a link where you can read the agendas and go to DOT and get there specifically. But if you go to the next, a couple I wanna point out so you get a sense of what they are. When laws are passed, or even if laws aren't passed, the rules that are in the New York City Charter are actually what the police enforce. So it's not just the law that's passed in city council, but they charge the DOT in this case with writing the rules and the rules are what the enforceable law. Lucian, were you able to find out anything about what the NYPD does about considering when they start enforcing the laws? Because when the laws are passed, it talks about when they go in effect, but the rules, these CAPA rules may or may not be completed by then. Yeah, I mean, I think that's an interesting kind of gulf uh, between what we understand to be the law and, and what the NYPD are enforcing. I'm, I don't have any uh, uh, additional information to provide this time, uh, but I, I, I don't know if NYPD is necessarily the, um, I, I'm going to, I need to ask around uh, maybe to the council. Um, I, I know that the general counsel for the city council, maybe they'll be able to help me understand a little bit better. Um, you know, if the if city council passes a law, then, you know, how long does it take? And what is the legal exposure to people who are following what the city council passes? Um, if the agency hasn't gone through its rulemaking process yet. So for me, let me see if I can get to you, you uh, next month. Thanks, because yeah, that may very well what clarifies what some people, when you read them, you say, well, I thought that rule was in, a, that law was already in effect and say, no, the rule hasn't even been completed. And in fact, this is when it's going to be done. Uh, what about open streets? And this isn't the one I want to point out. But I didn't realize they need to amend the traffic rules to update the provisions relating to restricted and limited use streets. This includes the concepts of open streets and shared streets. So although we did a resolution and there are some shared streets in existence, I had no idea there's no actual recognition in the New York City Charter for them yet. So there are complications out there talking to the agencies that, you know, we don't know. Anyway, extended painted sidewalks, another thing they're gonna take on, and you can see how many rule changes they have to make in the process. But this isn't the one I want to point out either. There are so many that are occurring this year. Loading zones. Did you know they have to amend them because right now the objectives, this proposed rule will provide a clear, consistent, and flexible loading zone regulation, providing a broader application of the use of DOT's toolbox, replacing a, re a restrictive parking regulation with a positive loading regulation. So in, rather than saying no parking or just to be loading zone, it's going to say, this is what you can do here. Provide clear indication of the purpose of the expeditious pickup and drop off of goods and passengers from commercial vehicles, for hire vehicles, and personal vehicles using dedicated use signage and curb regulation. So did you know this isn't really written out and specified yet, but it's going to be done in the first quarter of 2023, which is the current quarter. So we should be seeing this soon. The one I care about, this one, we passed a resolution asking them to do this. That's why I want to point it out, to say they actually did what we asked them to do, which could be coincidental, but it could be that, you know, who knows. But if you recall, this was one where the T, we have a lot of T intersections in our district, but it was actually illegal for pedestrians to cross at T intersections. So if you had a road that dead ended into another one, which there are lots of them, uh, not just West Street, not just anything around the perimeter, but there are many of them in the middle areas too. So they're going to change it where now it is legal for pedestrians to cross the road in a T intersection. They can, but even if there's no crosswalk there, it is also not legal for vehicles to park in front of pedestrian ramps if they're at a T intersection without a crosswalk, which currently it is legal to do that. 
So that's what we asked them to do, and the DOT is going to rewrite the rule. Thank you this quarter. So if you think they don't listen to resolutions, we're getting this one. And quickly, just so you know the scope of it, yeah, definition of commercial vehicles, did you realize it needs to be better defined? Again, for enforcement as well, providing clarity for the industry regarding restrictions on travel, because it's not clear. Things you thought were done, they aren't. Next, so we don't want to overly complain about the NYPD when, in fact, they have nothing that's actionable to work on. Commercial cargo bikes to provide rules governing the operation and parking of commercial cargo bikes on New York City streets and create a permitting process for businesses using cargo bikes. Again, they refer to pilot projects and we were host to one at Whole Foods. So this is in response to that project. So hopefully there'll be more growth of cargo bike deliveries by businesses as it becomes operationalized with this rule. Next. Updating truck width limits. Again, it's wider, that doesn't seem good, but the reality is it's probably matching what already exists anyway. Next. Cyclists allowed to follow pedestrian control signals will actually be formalized. Again, this is another one where the law has been passed, but the rule has not been. And I think that's created some of the mismatch of what people are outraged by. But in this case, pedestrians, I'm sorry, the cyclists can follow pedestrian control signals unless there is one of those at the same stoplight, there is one of the little cycles that gives them their own signal. Then they have to follow that signal instead. Next one, they are doing a lot of cleaning up in this year. Cyclists are allowed to turn red on, on red signals. Again, this is going to be finally formalized. Uh, existing behaviors and the cyclists, the opportunity to turn ahead of turning traffic, allowing to avoid blind spots. Of course, they still have to give right of way to pedestrians, so that's included. Next. Oh, yeah, proceeding through a red signal at the top of the T intersection. Again, what cyclists believe and what other people are outraged when they do it, this is going to straighten it out with, a, with the rule being created. The fourth quarter of 2023, so they'll have to wait for a while. Next one. This one is such good news. Repair of damaged roadway unrelated to construction restoration. I have to tell you, I'm thrilled about this one. And I didn't realize it didn't exist already but they do not currently include a provision requiring the DOT permit permittees to repair defective conditions when they're done with the road. This should be a real godsend, especially for the cobblestones, but for any of them where any kind of utility work or other work that's done, the DOT can now go in and demand that the road be put back the way it was before, which they have not been legally able to do because this rule did not exist. And Ed Pinkar has brought that up at the discussion of cobblestones that was done at Quality of Life Committee. Hallelujah. Yeah, really. This is another long awaited one. Next one. Up to, oh, I love this one too. Updating accessibility requirements. They never really got around to standardizing these things. But when they finally update them, utility companies, DOT permittees, contractors, developers, government entities, when they have those little detours around construction sites, they're going to actually have to make them accessible. They're going to have the guidelines in these rules for exactly what's expected of them. Yay. Finally, this will be done again in the third quarter of 2023, so the beginning of next year, next calendar year. Next one, a vault program. Again, it's going to change and affect some of the people in Tribeca and others, but this is more permitting. Next one. There's going to be an update to provocable consent. So since we handle them in this committee, it'll be interesting. Uh, there will have to be some renewals and other things built in and how that will or won't affect us. We'll find out as a committee. Can I just, uh, sorry, uh, on Thank the you. revocable consents and vaulted, because Tribeca is like 
I think it's 75 yes. to 80% vaulted. Yes. If we want to do anything about resiliency, then we are looking at above ground trees in containers, which relates to, because we can't put them in sidewalks, right? Because everything is vaulted. So revocable consents are required for above ground trees. And Friends of Duane Park has a program to put, so that's my experience. Uh, and it's simplifying this process in a way that helps us create more permeable receptacles for rainwater and other, and air quality mm -hmm. and all those things um, is an important issue for me. So I'm just putting that out there. Yeah, and that's what we'll have to see when the rules come out. And like I said, I will send everybody a copy of this link so they can look at them for those who are interested in specific ones. And then they spell out really the details of what the rule is going to say. So if you're interested in doing that, but there is going to be some implication for all of these that we're going to see more as they go into effect. Our finalized. Next one. Update. This is very quick. Uh, if you recall, I think it was last month, well, two months ago, there was this comment, there was a Twitter comment about if you're on a bicycle and you are on an unmarked road, you can go in the middle of the road versus towards either side if you feel that for safety reasons that um, that's important. I asked the DOT to clarify that. To go to the next slide. You can see the response that I got. Cyclists may use the middle of the travel lane on unmarked streets if there is a situation that would make it unsafe to use the sides of the road. So yes, she is correct. Next one. I have to clarify things were announced. Uh, things riding a scooter using bicycle lanes, use bicycle lanes when available. I asked for clarification on this one about since they show you a bicycle, it's like what scooters are you talking about? And I was told it's a device with handlebars, a floorboard or seat that weighs less than 100 pounds, can be powered by electric and or human power up to 50 and go up to 15 miles per hour. So you're talking about the stand up scooters. Both manual as well as propelled. So I want to clarify that if you if you're bothered by them on the sidewalk, there is in fact a rule and that's part of the education to encourage people to use the bike lanes versus using the sidewalks. And interesting, this was the announcement that the mayor made about they're piloting all vehicles are going to have it's starting with a small number installing uh, speed limiters on some of the city cars city-owned vehicles. So that will be interesting to see how that proceeds. And next, because I think that's the end. I think that's right the there? end. Yes. So any comments before we leave and close out the meeting? Then thank you all for bearing with us. I look forward to seeing you at full board and then finally next month. Take care. Okay, everybody. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Very informative. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank Night, you. everyone. Uh, everybody go to your other committees and, and force them to do budget conversations like this. <laughs> Were we supposed to be doing